Hi, and welcome to the Actuarial Data Scientist. For this problem, the first thing that we're going to go into is the Neiman Pearson Lima. So for this, I initially, you know, try to walk through and derive all the things that we use, but to be perfectly honest, this is uh, finally something that's definitely beyond my grasp, uh, so I'm not going to be able to prove this because some of this notation I'm not even familiar with. Uh, so instead, I want to talk about uh, each of the moving components within the Neiman Pearson Lima. The likelihood ratio test is the most powerful test among all possible statistical tests. So the log of the division of the likelihoods of the alternative versus the null hypothesis uh, is greater than or equal to some constant which is how you define your critical region. So what I just want to walk through in terms of uh, the terms used here is power and prior to that alpha or type 1 error. So first off, alpha is the thing that everyone's familiar with, I'm sure, which is the probability you reject the null given the null is true. So this is to say whatever you're assuming to be the case, you uh, accidentally reject it. Now, uh, similar to that, you could consider type 2 error, which is you fail to reject the null, or you kind of go along with the status quo, uh, even though the alternative hypothesis is true. So this is the different type of error you can have. And then finally, you have power, which is just 1 minus type 2 error. And this is a more intuitive uh, metric. You know, it's just 1 minus that same number. Um, but if you do 1 minus the probability you fail to reject, given the alternative is true, that's the same as just saying the probability you reject the null, given the alternative is true, uh, which is a more intuitive way of thinking about it, I think. Um, so to dig into this a bit more, just a, a quick hypothetical. Assume we have a, a sample of data, and we have two hypotheses. One is it's a normal 0, 1. And the alternative is it's a normal 1.96 is the mean, and variance is also 1. So in this hypothetical, one thing we could do is say, I want to do a two-sided test where the probability I reject the null, given that null is true, is 5%. And so we have that shown here with the green distribution. So the green curve is if uh, the null hypothesis or mean 0 is true. And then the blue curve is if the mu equals 1.96 is true or the alternative is true. The highlighted green section is the probability you reject the null even though the null is true. So assuming that curve, that's what we end up with there. Uh, and what we have here is 2.5% on the right and then 2.5% on the left. Um, so that's how we get our alpha of 5%. To get our power, we can then say, OK, well, if we assume the alternative, alternative is true, uh, what is the probability that we successfully reject the null hypothesis? Uh, so the blue curve is the actual distribution. And then what's the probability we actually reject? So that we're actually above 1.96 is the metric here, um, or less than negative 1.96. and uh, although there is some area to the left over here, it's basically zero, and we say the power is 50%. So we're going to successfully reject the null hypothesis 50% of the time. Now, alternatively, what we could have done is a one-sided test. So uh, again, our alpha is 0.5. It is just the same as the previous. 5% of the time, we are going to reject the null even though the null is true. So that is unchanged. But simply by saying, instead of doing half and half on each side of the green distribution, if we just do a one-sided test, you see that actually improves the amount of shaded region in our blue curve. Because now we're seeing that when the alternative is true, 64% of the time we're going to successfully reject the null hypothesis. Um, so this is just going back to the Neiman Pearson Lima is saying that when you consider the likelihood of your two possibilities. Uh, the best critical region is the one where you just say, if it's greater than or equal to this certain uh, value, you reject, otherwise you don't. Um, so 
basically it's a, a one-sided versus two-sided is the simplest case I can think of of uh, demonstrating this that this is the most powerful test um, again that all, all the nuances of that proof is kind of beyond me but I uh, just wanted to illustrate you you could have any section of the green distribution highlighted you could have a bunch of piecewise sections highlighted and it's just that there is some best highlighted section in terms of if you're restricting yourself to having exactly an alpha of five percent uh, this is the best critical region you can choose that keeps that green section at 5%, but then maximizes the blue section or that power. So enough with uh, my toy example. Uh, going into the problem itself, we have uh, two different uh, distributions we're considering. And then also of those two different samples of data, we have an alternative and a null hypothesis. Um, so here we're just showing the likelihood of that X data is the product of the PDFs. It's just the definition of the likelihood and we're just taking this from the question itself. And then the log likelihood is just taking the log of that product. The next thing we can do is just recognize that the log of A times B is equal to the log of A plus the log of B. And that's how we're able to go from this product symbol to the uh, summation of logs. Finally, we can break up the summation into its two components and then bring this exponent lambda minus one down in front of the log. And then finally, when you have the summation of a constant, you can just take that constant and multiply it by the number of iterations within the summation. So that's how we go from this summation here to n times the natural log of lambda. And then on the right, we're able to pull out this constant out in front. And then similarly, so that, that was for our x data. And then our y data is actually the exact same distribution. It's just instead of n, we're going to use m. Instead of x, or sorry, instead of lambda, we're going to use mu. And then instead of x, we're going to use y. But otherwise, it's the same structure. And then finally, uh, this gets a bit confusing because there's two samples of data at the same time. I think they're just trying to make the question extra convoluted and complicated. Uh, but the likelihood that we're interested in considers both these distributions. And so really our log likelihood needs to consider both x and y uh, in conjunction. And for that, you would take the product of both PDFs. But since we're doing the log likelihood, the log of that product is just going to be the summation of their log likelihoods. So that's why we're able to take uh, this quantity here and then this quantity here and then just sum them together to get our log likelihood. Uh, and then now that we have our log likelihood, we can uh, just quickly revisit what our critical region is defined as, which is uh, the log likelihood of our alternative subtract the log likelihood of our null hypothesis. And then that's going to be greater than or equal to some constant. So I just, I have a paragraph here walking through this too, but this is just to say the, the way that I remember that the direction of the inequality uh, is what it is, is by visualizing kind of my toy example that I walked through earlier. So let's actually scroll back to that and just keep in mind that we're saying alternative minus null needs to be larger than a specific value. So. Uh, imagine our test statistic is literally a sample size of one and that test statistic is zero so we're saying what's the log likelihood of our blue curve subtract the log likelihood of our green curve and then it's greater than our specific value and that's because as I move to the right towards my critical region um, I would see my alternative get larger. So essentially the likelihood that my alternative is true is gonna become more likely as I move to the right, which is also towards my critical region. Um, so that is just to say, uh, as the likelihood of your alternative grows, this difference should also grow and then that's gonna increase 
your test statistic, which once you're above a specified value, you're gonna um, know to reject the null. So I'm not sure if that was helpful, but that's how I remembered this uh, inequalities direction or try to intuit it. Um, but going into the actual calculation here, so now that we have this form that we're gonna follow, we're gonna take our log likelihood we just derived here and plug and chug. So uh, using the values within the problem itself. So here, uh, I believe this is lambda, lambda is three and uh, mu is eight. And we end up with this quantity and then likewise, uh, I guess this is lambda is 2 and mu is 4. So now we have these two different values, which are the log likelihoods of uh, our null and alternative. And then finally, we want to say, what is the log likelihood of our alternative minus the log likelihood of our null? And that's going to be greater than or equal to some value of k. What you then need to know uh, for this next step in this problem is that the question is only asking for the form. And you'll notice they, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, but they use the letter C for, I think, just some constant. And that's because if all we care about is the form, uh, you know, adding some constant or multiplying by some constant doesn't change the form. And so what we can actually do is really simplify this uh, long equation or inequality here by saying n times the natural log of 3 is just a constant and so you know we could subtract it from both sides and then on the right side we have k minus n times the natural log of 3 or we can just say instead of k times or subtract that quantity just call it c it's going to be some constant who cares because I just care about the the general form and that's why we're able to completely ignore uh, this n times natural log of 3, m times natural log of 8, and then the same components for the null portion of this inequality. That leaves us with this more simplified inequality. And then the final step is just to simplify further by saying uh, combining like terms. So we have 2 times the summation of the natural log of x, and then subtract 1 summation of the natural log of x. So we are only left with one of those. And then finally, uh, 7 subtract 3 is going to leave you with 4. And the direction of the inequality hasn't changed. And if we scroll back up, we see that, oh, we're not given. Uh, so I believe it's B. Sorry, my color didn't work. So yeah, the final answer is B. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, but otherwise I'll just catch you next time. Thanks.